what's missing curfew. It's when you kind of play guilty, but you show up. How nice is a green light on the road, though? No practice tomorrow, no playing, just go. Scotty Upshaw in the clear, and he scores! One in front, scores! A few laughs, a little bit of fun, and obviously a lot of hockey talk. You're listening to Missing Curfew. Fell lads. Fella. My man, how we doing, brother? Things are good, bud. Uh, long weekend for me. Long weekend. <laughs> what, what, into... When isn't it a long weekend for you, bro? Yeah, it was a long weekend. This Every week. weekend of your life. I mean, weekend. that's what happens when you uh, you go celebrate your mother in law's, um, you know, monumental century birthday. Not century. What do you call it? Every ten years. Centennial. Centennial. No, it's definitely not centennial. Uh, that's a hundred. Yeah. Well, what do we call every the, ten? The only reason I know that it's a decade. Oh, a decade. Yeah. A, d- a decal. Because it was a decal bo- birthday. The only reason I know it's centennial is because it's the Boston Bruins' 100th year, and I think it says that on their 100 and centennial underneath it. Nice. It's just throughout centennial. Centennial Arena. Where was that at back in the day? I used to play against the North Bay Centennials. Yeah. Up in North Bay. <laughs> I'll never forget Josh Gratton fighting DJ King. Season's over. We're out. It's a one game playoff, play in to get in the playoffs, and Gratz goes toe to toe with DJ King. And I'm like, why, Gratz? He's on the bus. His fucking nose is just. That guy, he's a, he had a caveman nose. By Six the hour bus trip home. I, I watched we... Horty fucking pumble his eyes shut in Nashville one night. And I think Gratz had to spend, I don't know, eight hours in the dentist chair after. His teeth were just crushed back. Yeah, he went and saw like. Goddamn uh, gargoyle. Yeah, a specialist. Actually, Gratz, I was texting with Gratz uh, about a couple months back. He, he, he listens to the show or he, he follows us on Instagram. He likes what's going on at Missing Curfew. I sent him some swag. Gratz, I hope you got it. Said it was delivered. Um, but I remember playing junior with him, and he went and saw, like, I don't know, the doctor or whatever, and his skull. Uh, I'm going to fuck up, like, the actual, but it was like a, like, what, a half, half a, an inch makes sense, or half a centimeter thicker than, who knows? Half a centimeter thicker than a normal man's skull. Caveman. Yeah, and like. Encino man. He's better looking, he's better looking. <laughs> You're better looking than that, Gratz. But if, if you would, like, if you would go around on the bus, I would, I would put my fist on Gratz's cheekbone. Yeah. And you know how his was flat. Like the fist would fit there, kind of like it would. When you break your orbital bone so much and it just heals back in, yeah. in you know, it, it hardens yeah. and crystallizes or whatever the hell that is. Yeah. You remember Paul Brown? Played I junior do. with him. Played, played Milwaukee. Yeah, great great guy, great player. Great player. He, he had <laughs> he had fucking like a um like a shield over his eyes. Like his, his eyebrows came down that's over like, his that's eyes. That's like Hordy. Yeah. Hordy so like... you could never, you'd never get him popped in the eye, which, you know. Achilles. Yeah. Uh, Horty would put his helmet on, and yeah. then this part uh, just above his brow would stick out kind of farther than his helmet, and his helmet would sit on it. Yeah. It's like a welder. Gratz's nose was hilarious. Dude. You could you <laughs> just like you could put Gratz's nose like over on his fucking ear. It was unbelievable. <laughs> I remember when Gratz got called up to Cincinnati. I'm like, move out of the hotel room and just live on our fucking couch. We'll get you a blow up mattress because this team's so cheap that they'll send you down over a hotel room. And then he fought that Grant McNeil in the first game, and I've, I've never seen a hunk of blood. Hey, Gratz was living on my living in my living room the rest of the year. Crazy. Gratz is the best. He'd be like driving the game. He's like, I'm not fighting tonight. I'm sick of this shit, Obes. I'm not fucking fighting. I'm like, don't fight that. You don't have to fight every night. He's like, I'm not. I'm not fucking fighting. First shift. Toe to toe. But uh, up dog, good to be in the studio with you here. The weather, buddy. It's, it's starting to uh, it's yeah, starting it's to nice. feel like uh, playoff hockey in spring. I lost my pen. And it's nice right there, out. right it's by like, your left hand, Phil. Yeah, I see it right, right there. By my fat hand. It's getting nice out. It is nice. Yeah. How about those uh, those people up in Mammoth in the Northern California mountains? You see Tahoe? There? Tahoe. I mean, 100 mile an hour winds up on top of that bitch. Yeah, this girl I used to date lives in Tahoe now. Her, her like, she had like, a, like an SUV. It was covered in snow. She she took a before picture. It was all the way over. And then the after picture. Imagine how long that took her. Yeah, I crazy. So this is funny. I'm sitting in the Freedom Lounge at Big Canyon this morning. I see Mags, Ron Magger. What a beauty. Yeah. And he comes in and he describes skiing. He basically goes, it's like taking cold showers, ripping up $100 bills. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, literally, yeah. young sport too, a young sport. I go, it is, Mags. Yeah, it is. But uh, Mags is a good Southern. I think he's oh, yeah. grew up Georgia or something like that. He's still got that Southern twang. Like taking a cold shower, ripping up $100 bills. He's tight with Bill Foley. Him and him, Bill are like boys. Yeah. Boys. Um. Yeah, Luke sent me a video the other day of, of him in the powder. And you're like, wow, that's sick. And I just took by like that looked cold to me. I'm like, oh, it's yeah, cold up there. Cold. But it's nice when you're up there because you finish and you're just you know you're sweating, but then you come down for a nice cold pint. Yeah. Or a warm hot toddy. No, I, I you mean, just you keep a rocking. Yeah, I'm you just know. wondering if skiing is like 
is good for the longevity of your life and 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 like your your we we've talked about skincare a lot but like uh, totally well it's definitely not like hanging like, out well I I, I don't know I what's compare- what's a veteran skier look like like you, you ever see a guy that lived on the mountain when you see him you're like. Holy yeah, well, fuck what, what about the guy, the reptilian that hangs down on the beach all, all life? No, that's true. Fuck, tough that's on true. Skin. No, I mean these guys at Big Canyon are getting stuff sliced off them every day from yeah, going crazy, right? I think yeah. it's a blend of both. You know, you need a little like your lifestyle. You, you need right? some spring. Go there for a month. Come back here for a month. <laughs> you need some spring month, chickens, and you need to get all four seasons. I think. Yeah. Did Loops make it out of Aspen? Because I, I got a tea time with him tomorrow. He's like, he just texted me from. I'm like, if you're not playing golf, let me know. I'll set up another. He game. doesn't even know if he's getting out of Aspen. Oh, I'm playing him for money tomorrow. Speaking of golf, up dog Bay Hill. Uh, Arnold Palmer. I never got to meet him, but he was my favorite. I got his head cover. Uh, my putter cover has the umbrella. Just a guy's guy. Guy's guy. Like, just an absolute guy's guy. Like, Legend. Flying his own plane. Um, his signature, everyone he wrote for a fan or anything was absolutely beautiful i love his i love his arnold palmer's with a little bit of vodka in there john daly's but i loved arnie i never got to meet him did you ever get to meet him or no i never did uh he played blackhawk one time up in uh, edmonton and did like a skins game there uh had the invite to go couldn't make it but he last uh he left a lasting memory i think on everyone he touched yeah um maybe women who knows oh he he had a good rap with the chicks didn't if you he? look at old school. Look Arnold, at his Arnold his hair Palmer and his stuff. outfits, and you just all, all you did was hear good stories of him, like treating people well, whether it's kids or donating. Or, well, he made that whole hospital right, the yeah. Arnold Palmer Hospital for. I know. I actually had people. surgery up uh, in Baltimore at the Arnold Palmer Hand Center. Where haven't you had surgery? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at Artie here. I mean, look at him in that picture right there. Like, looks like you? Tom Doherty. Yeah. Like at Tom Doherty, yeah. right there. Had the pants, the banana pants. Know. He has the banana pants. I mean, just a great looking guy. What here's... kind of wrench do you think Arnie has on? I think he was stringing around a nice one. Can look, you see it in his pleat? Look at him here. Yeah, see, look at that. Yeah. Look at the tan on that guy. Unbelievable. Where's he from? Buddy, grew up uh, right by Oakmont in Pennsylvania. He did, eh? Yeah. So good, like, Philly guy. Yeah. Or no, good. that's Pitt. Pitt, Pitt, Pitt yeah. Uh, good Pennsylvania lad. Huh. Uh, never played Bay Hill. You haven't played Bay Hill either, have you? No, never I been. I would love to play it. I just yeah. When I think of Bay Hill, I just think of Tiger back in the day. Yeah. Coming to 18, needed to make that putt to win it. What did he do? It five, felt like five times. The one time was in the dark. Is Bay, yeah, Bay Hill is the, the dog leg right around the water oh, yeah. at, at 18? Oh, yeah. And then the one hole that's a dog leg left around the water on the yeah, back Yeah, that's like 11. That's a tricky little We're like, Remember DeChambeau when he was all juiced up or whatever he was on? Drove the green, didn't Pretty he? much, almost. Yeah. yeah. Before he left for live tour. Carried the, the lake the long way. Carried the long lake. Yeah. Uh, There's a great video of Artie on his last hole at 18. He's like, he's got a three wood and he's uh, it's his last round ever and he just... Yeah, and it just like chases oh, chases up. I, I think he made par, but it just like it didn't go higher than this, and it just kind of was. This not Tiger's huge cut three wood into the back right pin? Oh yeah, Tiger right? dominated this. Yeah, one. I heard an interview with Stevie Williams. He was doing a podcast a couple weeks ago, and he talked about Tiger winning Bay Hill. The time it was in the dark, it was basically in the dark or whatever. He said he made the putt, got the trophy. He, Tiger lived right there, I, and when he got home, he started working on. Like some three wood that he missed on the back nine. Really? He didn't even go to celebrate. He just went back to the range to his house and started hitting the shot that he, he didn't hit up. the Rolodex at first and just you know, like, celebrate dude, a bit. You got to enjoy the like. Yeah. Listen, I probably enjoyed the wins too much, but like you got to enjoy them a little bit, right? There was a point he was too much. Yeah, MJ. I know, Charles. You know, the boys got a hold of the young Tiger. K Wash is going back to play MJ on uh, this month, March twenty first to twenty second, because I wanted to see if I could get the flying Frenchman out at Riviera. He's like, I'm going back to the Grove. I'm fucking taking on MJ. I got ski. Let's go. I go, take <laughs> take him down, fella. Go get him. I'll, I'll never forget him going toe-to-toe with MJ. That was cars. the best, yeah. He is me. I am him. I just want to be like Mike. I heard that. <laughs> it was like, I was just sitting there like, this is unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> Updog, DraftKings, baby. Uh, get the odds up there. Bay Hill, one of my favorite weeks of the year. I will go first. I got my... I got my... I guess favorite that I'm going to pick in a little bit of a long to shot. Scotty Scheffler, plus 650. It's a ball striking course. You got to ball strike it. Nobody hits his irons better than this guy. If his putter can get going, he hasn't won yet. Number one player in the world. He's won here before. Plus 650. I like this guy. I'm going to put some cheddar on him on DraftKings. And then my long shot at plus 2200, just because he was tech- checking out my chick at fucking the Bahamas, Cam Young. 
<laughs> Played good last week at the Honda. I don't know what it's called now. Some different name. But uh, I got Cam Young at plus 2,200 as my long shot. And the number one player in the world going out on a limb, Scotty Scheffler, plus 650. Let's get that putter going, foul. Ah. I like it. Scotty Scheffler's always a good bet. I He was buzzing for me at uh, the Waste Management Open. Uh, what do we got? Rory? Rory for winner? Plus 900? You got to like that. Victor Hovland? I mean, he'll yeah, be wearing the look, tight pants, plus 1,600. Good odds He there. jumped out at me, too, a bit. I mean, it's a good bet. Plus 165 for Victor Hovland, top 10. That's not bad. What's Scotty Scheffler, top 10? Minus 140. Yeah, he don't miss. He don't miss. Top 10 machine. You know who used to be a top 10 machine? It was John Rahm. John Rahm was a top 10 machine. Can uh, can our boy Max Homa get her? Get, you think can he put one together here? He's had due. A, he's had a kid. He just. I don't want to. I don't want to blame having a kid. I know. But I'm gonna blame it, right? You yeah. have a kid. So like, what? could you imagine playing when you have kids now? Absolutely not. No, I'm. You know how tired I am right now. That's I'm, I'm mean, drinking coffee. I almost like, fell asleep in the parking lot. Remember that like, time? <laughs> you were tired. You were tired for different reasons when you played, but it's a different tired, right? Like. How, what's it? What's what's what, what's up more tired? You staying up all night chasing trim and getting it, getting it done and leaving the legs in the bedroom, no. or Beckham not sleeping? In, you're yeah, no, more that tired gives now. me energy. Yeah, that, it used to give me energy. I used to feel so good in the morning doing that. Uh, no, are you nuts? I wake up now, I, and I told Christina this morning. I said we got to figure this out. Like I can't be going to the podcast. I can't. I can't be tired like this. She goes, "It's probably Vegas on the weekend." I go, "No, it's not." It's not Vegas. It's it's Beckham who's screaming into that stupid monitor, fucking one a.m. religiously, and then three a.m. Oh. And then, of course, I you know I get back, and then it's my dog. It's it's one thing after another. Obes. Yeah, I know it's coming at you. Stay single, but <laughs> I stay at the Bay Club. Stay single. If you do get a dog, though, I think you really enjoy that. Yeah, I'm but, thinking about getting a dog. But fuck, is a it? Baby steps. It's in. tricky, man. Like Izzy's good now. She's three and a half. She's fine. Beckham, he's a fucking. So Izzy menace. was a better sleeper than Beckham, I guess. Yes, right? this kid, he's a, he's fucking. Like his old was, man. He's a savage. I just, yeah, he needs a, a hockey stick and a golf club and and just go, buddy. He's a tank. I saw him last week at the uh, big at the big game where he played pickle. He's a tank. Yeah, he's a tank. Yeah. What's he weighing? Oh, uh, thirty pounds. Twenty eight pounds. Yeah, he fuck, he looks like a little fucking beefy boy there. Twenty eight pounds. He's well eight. Yeah, so she fucking like, Aspen, good living. Yeah, no, he's not How so old much. Is he? He'll be two. He's two in September. Yeah, yeah. Good little wrench on him. I bet. Hey, uh, I pick a guy up, dog. Give us who, who you like there. Are you going to go Hoblin or who you like there for that foul? Out? Yeah, no, I'm going to go Tommy Fleetwood. Holy fucking fairway Jesus. Yeah, plus Fair- you, you said it's ball striking time. Fairway he's a ball striker. He is one of the best. He's, he's never won the PGA Tour. Can you believe that? Plus 2,500 this week. That's a good bet. I'm going to throw 1,000. Oh, What's that? What's that for 25 grand? That's 25 Gs, baby. All right, I'm going to clean out DraftKings. How are you? Yeah. Uh, that's my bet. Actually, I probably won't go a thousand. That's a lot. Nah, come on, bud. I'll go a hundred. You got lots. Uh, Bay Hill, one of the greatest weeks of the year. I'm looking forward to taking it in up, dog. Uh, hey, shout out to our boy, the captain, uh, Kevin Conley. In all serious, yeah, Captain Cons. Yeah, Cons, Captain. Hey, 50. captain. Fifty years old today. I text him. I said, Cons, happy birthday, happy fiftieth, bro. You look the same way as you did 15 years ago when I met you after the Kings game when we played him in the playoffs. Your skin is glowing. Your hair is. Great, you look good. Um, there was a video on on social media of him and Avery, Sean Avery, trying to open this fucking stroller. I was in tears. College is like, yeah, no. I, he's like, I was at the Beverly Center last week. I was humiliated. I couldn't get this thing open. Like, I was just in tears up, dog. It was great. You should see these boys stroll. I'm sure you I, I did. I saw it. It's I, And we've been there. Anyone who's ever had a fucking stroller in their car, uh, and if you're doing it by yourself, it's embarrassing. It's hard. Oh, There's like secret little compartments and tricks and little handles and levers and buttons and it's fucking too much. <laughs> there was three buttons on this. Avery's like, who, do, who designed this thing? Who thinks yeah. what, what what mother out there has three hands to hit the third button? It was, yeah. it was chaos. And and they actually try to design them so you can hold the kid and do it with one hand. You should just be able to snap it like that. Like you should just yeah. pick it up and go like that. And it should just it open. Should, yeah, like a, you press the blows yeah. up. There's yeah, got to be an easier know. way. These two poor bastards were just struggling. Um, so 50, 50, but that's a good old. skin program and probably not a lot of skiing or time on the beach. Good skier. Good skier? Good Go skier. Nice. Yeah, really nice. Not, he never wanted to get any sun when he came. No, I know. Just, never. See? Yeah. Well, he's Irish too, right? He's got the pale Irish skin, so he was trying to. And he's a primetime player. Remember, he'd always go for a nap. Yeah, he, he comes come up down during sunset. He's making his appearance really and just about sunset. He's like, going for a nap. I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? Go, oh, look, at, look at this, but hey, have some mush or something. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm going for a nap. He'd come back ready to rock. Primetime player. 
He is. He's a prime time player. He would like the eight thirty p.m. puck drop. Yeah, yeah. That's I remember. Him. I remember the first time I stayed at Cons's house. I stayed the one night. I stayed the second night, and then the third day I wake up and I'm like, "Hey, well, what's going on today, buddy? You want to grab, grab some lunch?" He's like, "Hey, bro, it's time you go, eh? <laughs> it's, it's time you go, bro." And then another great thing when I first started hanging out with Cons, we're up in the hills and. And the girl just looked at me and she's like, do you think you're on entourage right now? Like, do you th- I'm like, I kind of do. Yeah, exactly. I kind of feel like I am. Wait, he, so don't yeah. ruin my moment here. Yeah, just no, go Khan's always made you feel like you weren't, but you definitely felt like you were. When I first met him. Yeah, totally. this is like my first weekend with, as it went on, no, Khan's is so much different than the character he played, obviously. But at that time I was up in the hills, I was playing the show, I'm hanging out with Kevin Connolly. I, yeah, I thought I was in entourage. I agree. Right? Especially when the, you turn around and there's just rockets everywhere. everywhere. I'll never forget Dougie Reinhardt. Coming down with this, this is one of the hottest chicks I've ever seen in the history of the world. The history of the world. Wow. Oh, yeah. He's listening to this, I bet, Dougie. Dougie. But, uh, Cons, happy birthday, man. Love you. Uh, and all honesty, with, without Cons, there, there probably is no missing curfew either, right? He was there from the get go. He helped us get us off the. Captain Cons. And, Cons, if you're having a birthday party, let me know, right? Yeah. It will, are we going to cancel Vegas this weekend? If no. You're with this, no, yeah, he no. should come to Vegas. He should. He should come to Vegas. What if we got him out of Chano? I mean, hell, I know what a could, time. We could throw that out to him. Yeah, let's we could throw it. that out to him. Uh, Collins, happy birthday, my man. And sticking with just good guys, up dog. I don't, I don't miss the NHL a lot. You know, I, I obviously miss the paychecks, which we joke about, but I don't, I don't miss it. Well, the other night having uh, dinner with Frosty, I missed it, man. It was so much fun talking to him. Uh, he's such a beauty, man. He's such a beauty. It was just telling stories and telling old stories and stories that are going on now. I turned around. I said, "You're making me miss the league right now." Yeah. That, that's what the league's all about. Talk about a guy that's been able to blend in with the old, with the new. You know what I mean? Totally. I mean, this, he's been around since my, fuck, 2000? Because I was there in 2002. He's, he's my assistant trainer in Nashville, 2002. He's got over 2,000 games Over 2,000 games. The boys fucking hooked him up with a nice watch. Yeah, that was nice. Um, and then Boston, the Bruins there. Even he, didn't even he didn't even fucking was a trainer in Boston. They got him a nice bottle of wine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's when you know the boys love you. The other squads when are other squads are just calling you over after games and giving you, <laughs> you know, giving you bottles of wine and, and presents, and you just you touch so many people. But he he fits that um, that East Coast. You know, he's from Connecticut, but he's like got that Boston in him. All those good guys back there, right? Totally. They're all bit one big family. Um, you know, his his kid. Brecken is just a little stud. He's playing on good the player, I guess. He's playing on the New York Rangers. He's playing yeah. on the little uh, Pee Wee Quebec Shooting tournament. Rangers. Yeah, good for him. Good style. Um, but he's he's just been a, a heart and soul guy, a mentor to all these kids. He's got Hughes. He's got the Hughes brothers now. He's got Nico Heischer. He's got the this is a young squad. Um, but you know, you and I both know him as a as a friend more than just a trainer. Yeah, and uh, you know, honored to have him as part of the part of the squad yeah there's not many guys that i would you know had my girl in town she was leaving i, I said to her i go I, I i gotta i gotta go see frosty like there's no i gotta see this guy and i was so happy to see him came up gave me a hug when you talk about national leaguer what is a national leaguer frosty's a national leaguer yeah good guy sick hair always in a good mood would do anything for anyone and everybody loves him around the league right i, I brought up ufc he put me on a group text with his buddy craig that like works high up in the ufc so now i'm, I'm beginning to build a relationship with him like, it's just like, what a guy. What a while guy. we sat here, okay? While we sat here, Frosty sends me, well, two messages now. One's to me, you, and Mel's about a fucking music festival. But he puts me on with Justin, who's our Bauer rep. Listen, I spoke to him this morning about getting your kid, you're getting Izzy set up with skates and gear. I mean, what this is yeah, randomly. I know. I'm like, fuck, I love you, bud. Yeah. How, uh, how good of a, just very thoughtful, buddy birthdays Beckham's birthdays he sends me if he goes to a cool Pearl Jam show I get like a pin because he knows I collect like random shit just badass so guys out there young trainers if you listen to this yeah follow this guy's lead totally because he's been around forever he's it's um it's training 101 it's being a good guy 101 it's being a national leaguer yeah. first and foremost and for the boys out there if anyone's you know sees our socials or listening take care of these guys the good guys. Make sure you tip them at the end of the year. Take them out for dinners. Get them some. They deserve it. They work their balls off. And on the other hand, if they're not good guys, don't tip them. Send don't them tip them. Send a fucking message. They know who they are. Yeah. I had some bad a trainers. Bad, bad trainers. trainers out there. Hey, bad ones. Yeah. Bad ones. Frosty, boys love you, buddy. Keep that hair flowing. We're going to get the Devils and get this guy Labat Blue, but I got some news on the Devils about what I got in my heart now for them. Um, last but not least, our little intro here. We all, we both love Pat McAfee. 
nonstop posting NHL fights. Every fight that's happened in the last two weeks, yeah. he has posted on his social media, yeah. great for the game. And say what you want about fighting and this and that. There's people out there, Matt Rep, you shouldn't be doing this. Look at his face. Will Tipton, who is a USC alumni, great golfer, played at USC, he's won the club championship. He shot 66 on Friday to work me over. In the Wall Street Journal, he read about Matt Rempe, and he brought up hockey to me. Will Tipton has never brought up hockey to me in the seven years I've been to Big K. And he went, hey, how about this guy from the Rangers, Matt Rempe? I go, how do you know about that? He goes, I read in the Wall Street Journal. So listen, say what you want about fighting. It's still good for the game up, dog. People Absolutely. are talking yeah. about it, and yeah. we're talking about your league. That's good. Absolutely. Yeah. No, this kid's a stud. He's seven games into an NHL career, and he's been talked about more than Connor Bedard for seven games. Well, he's playing harder than him. I know. Well, hey. Yeah, I know, but listen. He's playing harder than him. It's, it's a different form, but it's just as effective. And when I say just as effective, I mean just as – it's like you just said. You've you've read about this now. Everyone's seen the videos. Um, they, they're breaking the internet, which they should. Yeah. Hockey is a fucking great game with warriors and skilled players, but it's nice that this guy's bringing to the forefront what it's like to put your balls on the line to fucking go out and fight heavyweights, been around 10 plus years and enjoy it and just doing it in fashion. Yeah. I don't care, but I've always wanted to be a blue shirt just oh, because of the too. just because of the reciprocals that you're oh, going to get when you walk around West you Village. Imagine. You know, you're showing up to MSG after. I mean, look at the king. The king's the king because he could save the puck, but also because he had good hair, great clothes, made a ton of money, oh. and he was playing in NYC, all right? If he's he's maybe not the king if he's come playing a career in Columbus. I'm just saying. He's played for the Islanders. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> but um sorry what, what this kid's done now in, you know, the last 3 weeks has a lasting impression on him and he's made himself a fucking hell of a start to the career and he ain't going anywhere. Yeah. He ain't there, going. There anywhere. was a guy up in Canada. I should probably say his name, but I'm not going to because I, I actually think he's he has a good show, but he said that Matt Rempe has to prove that he can play. He's played seven games. He's got one goal. He, he, he's got a million hits. He put Labushkin out of the game, and he's, got, he's fought the toughest guy in the league. Every tough guy in the league. What else do you want him to prove? Who he said can skate. <laughs> yeah. I, no, but, but that's dumb. Yeah, it's dumb. Who says that? Yeah. Did he, he play? Guys, he, he, never, he never does, played. This guy okay, never exactly. played. Exactly. Rep, you can get around out there. No he shit. But skate. do you think anyone on that ice doesn't go up to this kid and just go, fuck, man, you're a killer? Yeah. Like, you're, you're, all, you're a killer, and I... You, I respect you to the max. Totally. The New York Rangers went from a team that I thought was soft to now if you ask the Florida Panthers, the Boston Bruins, the Tampa Bay Lightning, now they're one of the fucking, if you yeah. play them in a seven-game series, keep your head up for Rempe. He I can know. skate. He can forecheck. Ask Labushkin. Yeah. Fucking almost put him in the third row. So yeah, for this totally. guy to say I that. that was a great hit. Great hit. Totally. I'm going to get to Sheldon Keefe in a little bit here. But, uh, yeah, I think it's great. Will Tipton talking about hockey. 66, he fired I shot 80. I thought it was pretty wow. good. Wow. I mean, Tip's the man. He's hot, He's soft mitts. Oh, man. He uses that little fucking 60-degree wedge like a butter knife. Buttery. Huh? <laughs> nice. Butter your bagel with it in the morning, fella. <laughs> Anyways, we'll be right back here at Missing Curfew. Up dog, my man. Our friends at Lucy are up to it again, fella. Made for your nicotine routine and delivered straight to your door. These are... Pouches are 100% pure nicotine, always tobacco-free. Choose your form, fella. Pouches, breakers, or gum. Nicotine pouches, but with a tiny capsule inside, fella. The capsule contains liquid flavor that saturates the pouch before it's even in use. Break it with your teeth, get it situated, and boom. Instant nicotine release when you need it. Let's level up your nicotine routine with Lucy. Go to lucy.co slash curfew and use promo code curfew to get 20% off your first order. Lucy offers free shipping and has a 30-day refund policy if you change your mind. That's lucy.co and use code curfew to get 20% off and always free shipping up, dog. And here comes the fine print. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age and every order is age verified. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Welcome back to Mr. Curfew. Bella. Up his world. Party time. Party time. Oh, in shit. Vegas again. He's going to Vegas with me. It doesn't I'm making stop. Him come. Up dog's world. Party time. I mean, fuck. I, f- <laughs> I feel pretty good now. You look good, man. You're Thanks, a freaking man. nature. Dude. You know what I'll tell you? I went and had a little workout, did some legs, did some abs, some glutes. Hey, fire up the glutes for the weekend. Um, but man, I was. Uh, I you had must a, have strong I, guts too. Eh? Like you don't uh, really get the shits or anything. The anus is hurting a bit. Like now. you never like like like. 
you never really get like oh because I'm in one like you know like no, you get, no but I, I did two sauna sessions yesterday with the plunge by the way yeah. there was a full ant disaster in my, my sauna yesterday it wasn't ant perfect man. Ant, ant, ant man ant man yeah for the <laughs> ant, ant man, man. What, a, what a flick um, no there was a full ant like ant hill in my in my sauna someone must have spilled a drink it might have been me and, and anyway <laughs> um, but no, listen, I, I went to Vegas. Shout out to Susie. Happy birthday. Uh, it's my mother-in-law. Happy birthday. We had a surprise dinner at this uh, old school fucking Italian joint. It was great. Um, Christina's sister, Nancy, got up, sung with this old school guy. It was it was great. And then we went to, uh, we went and played some cards. Did well. Did well in the card table. In fact, oh, me, boy. Christina, Bring and her sister. Bring me, Ojo. Christina, and her sister, Nancy, all cleaned them up at, uh, at Arias. Thanks for coming. And then, um, <laughs> then we did some Top Golf. A little top golf. Fuck, was it windy, buddy, out there? When she's breezy, oh. swing easy. Oh, and shout out to our boy Herb, Herb and Munson. What a guy. Uh, Herb yeah. Cohen took me out to Summit with Mike Neville. We uh, we got a round of golf in before Speaking the fucking of good hair, torn. Mike Neville. Mike Neville's real good hair. Great flow. Real good hair. Yeah, white and just slick. Silver back. Fox. Silver Fox. Yeah, the girls like that. Oh yeah. Um, so we played Summit. And, great track. Uh, well, yeah, not a bad track. You know, Discovery. For, like really fair off the tees. Like, yeah. So for me, it's perfect. And that's, then it gets a little bit of the greens, Fazio, the greens are Fazio tough. course. Keep greens it tough. Yeah, the greens are tough. A little bit of water. Yeah. But keep the grass nice so it's good lies. You don't want to fuck around with the bad lies. No. Um, but then we, uh, then I did a, you know, one end of the spectrum to the next. I went to a Chicago show. A Broadway? Yeah. No, it was not so much Broadway. It was a band. <laughs> Chicago is terrible. <laughs> but Duke, like, you know, Duke thought he'd do something nice. There was like 15 of us there. We did that, and then we went to Carbone. Oh. I took me, Christina, Emily, Matt to Spicy Carbone. rigatoni? Oh, yeah. Yeah, hammer time. And then I let it fly at Omnia. I saw I went that. to Omnia. Shout out to Joe, my boy from fucking Loud Luxury, who does want to come on the pod. Sweet. And we're going to have him on there. We're going to bring him down, send the Sprinter, Missing Curvy Sprinter up to him. He lives in L.A. Uh, he's going to come down. We're going to get him in the studio to talk about all the fucking crazy shit he gets to do. It, what a life he's got. Oh, I bet. But he loves teeing it up. So we're going to get him on the pod. We're going to tee it up at Big Canyon. And then we might even go see him this weekend. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe we just we tee it up. And then we just go with him right to wherever he's playing that night. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Fire it up. Let's go. And I may or may not have went to the Rhino, too. After. <laughs> Dude, ended up at the Rhino. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. That's what our T-shirt yeah, is. Ended up at the Rhino. I saw a video of you, your girl pouring vodka, Casa de Zul, in her sister's mouth. I'm like, what? These, yeah. These fucking upshells are crazy. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was good. Well, Duker, how was Duker? How do you do at the tables? Did he play anything or what? Duke lost a little bit at the table. <laughs> Duke, but he loves to just go. Oh, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a, a legend. He's yeah. a guy. He's a guy. Dude's he's a legend. Guy. Up his world. Party, Party time. time. Ended up with the Rhino. <laughs> Woo! Uh, DraftKings bets. Uh, listen, uh, I had the stars in my lock of the week where I set up dog. I thought they'd be like minus 350. Well, I woke up Saturday morning. I checked there. Minus 510. Got all the way up to minus 600. I saw that. So, anyway. <laughs> I, so, so, I take the bet and... Listen, I don't know the name of the goalie for the Sharks. I should probably look it up. Doesn't matter. This Dominic guy, Hassett. This guy, <laughs> he was playing like Dominic Hassett. Like, it should have been 10 nothing Leafs. Like, uh, Leafs. It should have been 10 nothing Stars. And it was 2-1 late. They tie it up. Goes into overtime. Mac Miller's there watching the game with me. And, like, she's oh. kind of looking at me like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm up on the couch. I'm yelling at the TV. They found a way to get it done up, dog. But minus 5-10, it's not perfect. But I want to tee it up. If can you do me a favor, can you pull up the San Jose Sharks, the rest of their, their schedule, please? Yeah, I got it right here. Now let now listen. Yeah, they're going to be minus. They're going to be minus fucking three hundreds against them the rest of the way in here. So you're, you're running the chance that you're probably going to get stung once or twice. And when you do, unfortunately, you got to win three games to make up for that, right? I get that. Mm-hmm. I'm not the best math guy, but I get it. But let's honestly go through their schedule here, and what games do you think they could honestly win? Okay, so they're at home here against the Sharks tonight, or the Stars tonight. Yeah. Then they got lose. the Islanders Thursday. You're going to lose that one. Then they got the Sen- – they, they might beat the Senators at they home could. Saturday night. The Sens-, the Sens had their rookie party in L.A., though. They're probably feeling pretty good. Yeah, and they had it Sunday, so they got a full week off. And so. they're feeling good. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say they lose to the Sens, too. They're going to lose to the Flyers. They're going to – you never know with Pitt. You really never know with Pitt. I'm going to say they lose to Pitt. Columbus, can they go into Columbus and win? No. That's a game I won't bet anyway. Stay away from that game. Yeah, I don't like Columbus anyway. 
Uh, Sharks, Hawks, okay. Sunday afternoon. Okay, toilet bowl. Don't bet this one either. Right? So I would, not, I would just stay away from those. I wouldn't bet those. So throw those off the board. They're going to Nashville. They're going to lose. Lightning at Sharks. They're going to lose. They're going to lose. Blackhawks at Sharks. Stay away from it. Stay away. Stars at Sharks. They're going to lose. Sharks at Wild. They're going to lose. <laughs> so you think they win four going in? I'm going to say Who's they, a better team, them or Chicago? Because we should, we should be doing this to Chicago. They suck. They do suck. They do I suck. feel bad because Panger calls a good game. Like, they, you know, they got Bedard. They got Felino. Love Felino. But they stink. Yeah, I'm going to say this, fellas. I'm going to say if you bet against the Sharks the rest of the way and don't bet those games against Columbus, uh, Chicago I would stay away from. I don't think they're going to win more. Besides those games, they're not going to win more than another four. Four. And they got 20. 20. So, you know, if, if, if you can bet them all, and you go, you know, twelve and two. You stay away from the six games. Aren't yeah, you? twelve and two, and those two that sting you are minus four or five hundred. Yeah, they might be that. You know, but but and you can always put them in a parlay. I've been doing these two gamer parlays that you can if you so if you're if you're scared of the minus four hundred, you don't want to get zapped. Put them in with another you know minus one fifty that you think's going to win, and that'll make it basically even money. But so, I'm saying I'm uh, listen. I'm doing it, fellas. I'm riding against the sharks the rest of the way in here. Tonight scares me a bit because it's minus 400 and they're at home. That's a lot of cheddar, but I still... So how, how about this line tonight? Yeah. Chicago at Arizona, minus 258 Arizona. Is that not where you just, like, I know Chicago played last night, but do you not take them at plus 210 to just go in? and the, the, Coyotes lost 14 in a row. What's the puck line? The puck line is even money. I would probably do that. Plus one, plus one point five puck line on Chicago. I would probably do that. It's very bizarre because yeah, the Arizona I, Coyotes is minus one point five at minus hundred. Yeah, so it's even money for. I would, yeah. I, I would take the Sharks getting a goal and a half probably. But I, it's funny you say that. I woke up and looked at that line this morning. I'm probably going to just take Arizona straight up. But it's Arizona's not a good enough team, I think, to be minus two fifty. Hell no, that's the that's the kicker. So is that they want Vegas wants you to take Arizona there, right? I don't know. Don't they aren't they trying to make you want to take Chicago with those odds? I don't know. Yeah, actually, that's very true. <laughs> See, this is how I'm I'm fucking out to lunch sometimes. No, I had this talk with Tom Riley yesterday at A and I said the reason those lines are that big is because they're trying to scare you off them. Like last night. That line last night, abs against the Blackhawks, should have been minus 1,000. Yeah. It was minus 470. In boxing or UFC or tennis, that's minus 1,000. That should have been minus 1,000. The, the Hawks had zero chance. Now, the, the, the Avs played their backup goalie who's had back-to-back shutouts. He's a, just a tower yeah. of terror in there. He's a monster. Yeah. So maybe that, but that, that game was not even close. I don't even know if the Avs tried and they beat him, what, 5 nothing. That was easy money. I tell you what, McKinnon's making a good push for... He's tied now. Buddy, I was thinking about you. McDavid's at 97 points. I think it was like two weeks ago. He was twenty points behind them, and you're like, I, w- I would bet that he catches them. Yeah, I'm like, holy moly, He's seven ninety-seven points. points. <laughs> I know. Uh, the poor Pittsburgh Penguins. Listen, there's certain bets too. Like the Penguins lost a heartbreaker in Calgary. Latang. I, I, I shouldn't. I can't sit here and. No, I know, but but you can critique his game lately. Yeah, it's been it's been tough. It's been a lot like my game. <laughs> there's been some holes in it. So they lose a heartbreaker up dog. It's snowing a shit ton in Calgary. They can't get out. They can't get out. They got to de-ice. You know how much we hate de-ice. And they get to Edmonton at three thirty in the morning. I hammer the oil. Did, I you, hammer. did you tweet this to the to the missing curfew fans? I didn't because That's some good intel. Yeah, listen. I feel like when I give a pick, fucking nine, it feels like nine times out of ten uh, it doesn't work. Yeah, I, I just say keep it rocking. Yeah, it's part of your job is to give picks. Yeah, you're right. Stop Talk being it. selfish. Eh? Don't be selfish. Just get you know. It's nice to fill up the bank account though. It is. I think if you bet against the Hawks and Sharks the rest of the year and you take the Avs, Oilers at home, and the Panthers anywhere they play, I think you're going to make money. Except tonight, where the Panthers go into New Jersey. Except tonight. They're due for a loss. They've been playing so well. And it's a new coach. A new coach. You know that. It's a new coach. This thing has been 6-0. I'm just going to throw it. I know. Don't jinx it. I jinxed it. You fucking you. Make- Come on, Greener. Yeah, we're going to get to Greener, but first it's the Mystic Curfew. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Dog of the week up, dog. Goes to the old veteran. No visor. Seventh man in the rotation for the shootout. Jamie Ben. 
Uh, nine goals, 27 assists, 36 points. Listen, he's not the player he once was. He scored that shootout winner for me. Jamie, thank you, fella. I fucking needed it. I was in one. But listen, I think it's going to be big come playoff time for them. I really do. We know they got Tanev. Uh, I just think Jamie Benn's getting fired up for playoffs, but he's the missing curfew dog of the week up dog. He yeah. went in, boom, forehand. How are you? Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Right in front of Billy Quinn and the boys. Yeah. But listen, yeah, Jamie Benn, you know him. He's, a, he's the head of the snake. He's a playoff guy. He steps up when it matters. He's their leader, and they are all in. They're going for another big push. They got the goaltending. They got the D. They're now added the depth to the D. Um, man, you got You can't, you can't count them out. No, they're in the West. Can't count them. And out. one good thing about Tanup is uh, Lundqvist is not going to have to play for them anymore. I'm sure he's a great guy. I never met a Swede that wasn't a good guy. But good God, he made some plays against the Sharks. Where if I could have got my hands on him through the television, I would have just. I was yelling, "Sit him down!" Enough, enough turnovers, bad gap. Fuck. So he's out. He's Tanifson. out. Tanifson. Yeah, yeah. They got good D man. Hakapah, yeah. Sutsi, uh, Hiskinen. Yeah. Uh, you know, Lindell. Guy just terrible style. Lindell. Awful oh, yeah, style. Yeah. Just awful. But gets... he mucks it up. Everyone always has the need. You need. Oh, uh, you need him. You need a guy like that. He's a human clock killer, though. You, 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 you got to have him. You called somebody that earlier in the, a couple months ago. It was <laughs> hilarious. Uh, but that's what he is. He keeps yeah. both teams off the score sheet. I uh, maybe Jenner. Yeah, yeah. I remember who was it? One somebody chirped me one time. I think it was Robbie Niedermeyer. Somebody said, "Oh, fuck you! You're really turning yourself into a shutdown defenseman." I'm like, "Yeah, what do you think?" He's like, "Yeah, you keep both teams off the score sheet out there." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Dallas is ready to rock, man. They're, they're they're looking good. So we'll see how that plays out. Up dog, my man. Get this guy, Labat Blue. Big fella, presented by Labat Blue Light, the pristine pilsner. Enjoy your beers together so you can live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly. Beer. Labatt, USA, Buffalo, New York. Ooh, it's always a tasty, tasty read. It makes me tasty. thirsty. I go back in there and grab one, maybe. Get this guy, Labatt Blue Up Dog. Lead us off. We had dinner with this guy the other night. I don't want to say it's the missing curfew bump, but hey, proof's in the pudding, eh? Travis ah, Green. Greener. Welcome back to the head coach, the seat at the table, the golden throne. You're now the guy leading the boys. Listen, it was a great talk. We had a great chat with him. And you know what? Anytime you step up and you take care of a tab for 10, good fortune comes your way. I know he did have a bunch of his buddies there. But, you know, we went and we went to pitch in. He said, I got it up, dog. Um, classy individual. But, listen, I had a chance to you, – you know Greener. You play with him. I had a chance to have Greener in training camp in Vancouver. I love what he did for the guys. Uh, he demands hard work, demands fucking you play fast, you fucking move the puck, you finish checks, you stick up for one another, um, and you play for the fucking jersey on the front, not the name on the back, fella. Yeah. Listen, um, I'm expecting them to come out tonight. They got the Florida Panthers for their first game under a new leadership. Nice test for them. And I'm testing this out. Nice My boy Greg Mueller said all it's been 6-0 and all year, I think, these stuff, and I've missed all of them, so I'm jumping on this one. But new coach, <laughs> I'm ready to go. I mean, they're, they're favored at home against the pesky Panthers. Yeah, no, the Panthers are rolling right now. But, yeah, you're, you're right. The, the coaching bump has been a real thing this year in the NHL. And, listen, Greener, when he took the associated job, this is kind of what I thought he you know would happen for him. I didn't think it would be this year. I, I, I didn't think the Devils would be sitting where they're sitting. Jack Hughes has yeah. been hurt twice. The goaltending is fucking horrendous. And it's no secret. Marky wants to go there, right? Or Marky came out and ripped the, rip, rip the, the organization. Ripped. Yeah, ripped him. So, um, listen, they're going to compete harder. I think it's going to be great for Jack Hughes and their young superstars. Greener's a demanding coach, man. I watched him. I almost watched every Canucks game when Greener was head coach there. Um, in the bubble, they knocked off the, the, the Blues, I think it was, and then almost knocked off, I think, Vegas or somebody. He brings a lot of structure, a lot of compete. Listen, it's 21 games. I, I wish it was the start of the season for him. Yeah. I, I, I hope he... I hope they find a way to get in and then he'll get rewarded with... Uh, but I think if Greener gets the job moving forward with a training camp and everything, that's when you'll see the real Travis Green. But listen, I'm all in with the Devils. I said some stuff last year about the wrong side of the river. I'm all in. You got Travis Green as your head coach. You got my boy Frosty behind the bench. Uh, I love this Jack Hughes kid. He's got great swag. I'm in. I'm, I'm pulling for him. I hope they sneak in. Get Travis Green and Labatt Blue. 61 games played. They're 64 points, Obes. They are eight points out of a playoff spot. But they got two wow. games. They got two games in hand on Tampa. So listen. They got to go on a run, but they've got, you know, they're sitting fifth in the wild card. So, you know, it's important that they don't fuck around and get ready 
to yeah. rock and roll tonight. Oh, they got to get it going right away, up dog. Uh, up dog, let's stay right there. Let's get this guy Labat Blue. Big J.J. Watt fella. J.J. Watt, wow. Broke the internet the other day with these one t- one tees. Ripping one tees. I think I sent Princey a thing and said, yeah, let's get just J.J. Watt on the, on the pod. I mean, imagine, he's a big hockey Imagine guy. this guy played hockey. I, I, listen, I'll never forget the first time I saw J.J. Watt. I had to go play. It was the, it was the ESPYs in, in L.A. when Loops was in the fucking yeah. body issue. So shout out to Jill Lipson. I'm like, Jill, I want to go up with Loops. She's like, listen, you can, you can go. You just got to play in the golf tournament. If you play in the golf tournament, you're a fucking red carpet ready to rock. I'm like, okay, I'll play in the golf tournament. It's out in your... Industry Hills, some goat track. So out I go, uh, and JJ Watt walks by me, and I'm like, dude, he was just oh, he's in the prime time. It was oh cool too my far. god, was that 2008? Wow, what a monster! Yeah, just a monster. I couldn't imagine him on skates. Crazy, but loves the game. Pretty good one timer. Not Even bad. Like no, he was ripping him high in the net. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. Bauer sent him all new gear. Dunham dialed in his See, name on his twin. Frosty, Everything. yeah, Frosty sends me the Bauer rep. Love I'm it. sure JJ Watt got Frosty to send him all that stuff too. JJ Watt, get yourself a Labatt Blue fella. Listen, JJ, if you're playing pickup, everybody loves the beer guy. Bring the beer for the boys. Bring the beer. Get the Labatt Blue yeah, yeah, yeah. on ice. Put it in the middle of the room. I couldn't agree more. The boys will love you. Guy's guy. Guy's guy. Uh, listen, Alex Lafreniere, New York Rangers, first overall pick. Listen, he came in during COVID. There was no training camp. I, I think that affected his development. Yeah. But listen, he's got 18 goals. Uh, he's playing in the top six. Get this guy, Labat Blue. His release is unbelievable, up dog, and he's going to be very important for these guys. So, Alex Lafreniere, is that how you say it? Yeah. Lafreniere. <laughs> Lafreniere, yeah. get yourself Labat Blue, buddy. Up dog, he's playing well. What about our boy, Fact Daddy? I got Ryan Fire O'Reilly. Fact Daddy couple, baby. Oh, this is the first time all year we've given Ryan O'Reilly and the Nashville Predators uh, a Labat Blue. That's because the Fact Daddy likes a nice whiskey, eh? Jamel, Crown Royal. Yeah, but you can start it off. But he would have an ice cold Labatt Blue after a win. Listen, the Preds have won eight straight. I took him to make the playoffs at the start of the year just because they brought Ryan O'Reilly in. And I thought he would have this big of an impact on him. They're playing unbelievable. Smashville is buzzing. Fact Daddy, 22 goals, 51 points. He does everything well. Uh, Right now, they're 72 points up, dog. They're a tough team to beat. Fact Daddy, get yourself a Labatt Blue. Fella. And then up, dog, last but not least for me, once again, betting against the San Jose Sharks the other night, I took the Minnesota Wild <laughs> minus three twenty or some shit. Sharks get the first one. Sharks get the Wild second get the, one. No, Sharks get the second one. Make it two nothing. So now I'm like in one again. Kirill Kaprizov, Kirill the thrill hat trick. Three of the sickest goals I've seen all year in the National Hockey League. One he just bounces out in the slot right to him, posted in. Other one, the, the hat trick one, pull and drag, and the other one was a breakaway <sighs> where he just bit. Yeah. Bit. Zip up. Now listen, the rest of the Minnesota Wild team, they don't have a lot of finish out there. I know. wasn't playing. They play hard, but I don't know. It's a fun place to play when when Minnie's good. Like, yeah. it's a fun place to go in for a good hard game, in Minnesota. The I, fans are great. The rink is great. Like, it's a good place to go play hockey. Great. I love playing there. Ice was always fucking buzzing. I love playing. Yeah. I love playing a mini. I didn't love the St. Paul Hotel, Finn Walls, but I did. Oh. <laughs> Finn Walls. I I love Billy Garen. Uh, I, listen, I love Middleton. I, I just think that when I watch them play, they're a very grindy team, which they have to be, but they just have no... Mm. No, no, yeah. no spunk. Like, no scoring ability, I guess is yeah. what I'm saying. But Kirill the Thrill does, man. This no, I know. In fact, you know, he was probably a little off. The vodka, the, the mix. He didn't have the right mix going this year so far. Yeah, 27 goals, 66 points in 55 games. He's got this... Listen to this. This is a stat that blew me away. He's got the second most goals since the All-Star break besides Matthews. Second most in the NHL this kid's got. His release is nasty. 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 So get him a Labatt Blue. And last but not least, Mika Kiprasov. They retired his jersey, 34 in the rafters. Listen, I, I missed Kipper by a year. He retired because of Bob Hartley. He had another year left on us. This, <laughs> this, this is how big of a fucking goof Bob Hartley is. I think Kipper was making six bananas or something. Had a year left on his deal. Wow. Shut her down. Maybe that's why Bob. Maybe Correct. I, I think I'm right about that. We might have to fact check that one. Maybe yeah, I'm, it's okay. Maybe I'm making that shit up. But I thought he had one year left and he just retired because he hated Hartley so much. But the stories I heard about this guy, Uppy, everybody in Calgary loved him. And you want to talk about a guy that would fucking play guilty? I mean, every night. I, He's I, a Finn. That's oh, why. I guess like, those guys are animals. Not just like, hey, let's go have a bottle of wine. Like, I guess he'd get fucking hammered and then the next night have 50 saves. Yeah. What do you say to a guy like that? Not, you say, fuck, you want to go for another drink? Yeah. yeah. You sure you want to go home? 
I don't think I so. remember the one PR guy. Who was it? What was his name? I can't remember his name. We bumped into him during the Battle of Alberta, too. Like, near the end of Kipper's reign, like, they would just make him go with Kipper. Like, you go you go with Kipper, and I just make sure he gets back to the hotel. And then he'd go out there 50 saves the next night. How I mean, that run to the finals was unbelievable. No GM ever said that to me or to any of my teammates. They hey, didn't have look to. after this upshot. <laughs> they didn't have to. They didn't have to. <laughs> Daryl Sutter, the old beauty, was the one oh. who brought uh, Kippersoff in. He was there. Yeah, he was there. What a mug. God, they need a new barn. I will say this about the Dome. I'm, I've been watching the Flames play lately. Tough. I lost a tough one last night to the Kraken. Good hockey game. Physicality, yeah. fights, Coleman and Tanev. It's a good hockey game. The Seattle Dome has character, and especially when you watch it on TV, it does, but it's just like, it's just, you see those guys up in the suite, they're all like, they can't move because the suite's so old and shit. You're like, get a fucking it's terrible. Get it's a, a bad barn. Terrible. It's the National League. What are we talking about? It's time to tear the shit fucking down. Get her down. But Kipper, congratulations. He was getting banged up. Uh, him and Rent Warner. I think I saw Kami in there. Uh, I'm sure nice. they had a good night. I'm oh, sure yeah. the party kept going. I mean, Kipper, man, he was, yeah, they, they almost stole that Stanley Cup away from you know, well, I mean, listen, we had Jay Feaster going last week. You know, let's not forget game six. Some people say that puck was in. Puck was in. Kipper Marty, said that. In his, and he, he did a Marty Jelena. They said it was in. You got to think that today with the technology today. Like, what a save. Who, who, who knows? <laughs> hey, what a, Ni- Nikolai. Nikolai Habi Bulin, what a save. But uh, get this guy, Labat Blue, sponsored by our good friends at Labat Blue USA. Treat yourself, boys. Weather's getting nice. 20 games left. Totally. Playoff hockey and the bat blue go hand in hand. Start crushing them. Sounds of summer. summer. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's milk carton time here. Uh, up dog at missing curfew. I'm oh. putting Sheldon Keefe on the milk carton. I like it. I, I don't know, Keefe. I, I think he's a pretty good. I think he's a good coach. He seems like a decent guy. He could probably use a shot of Ozempic in his life. You know, he seems to, you know, he could grab the short fork, as Troy Ward used to say. But listen, everybody in the world was ready for Reeves and Rempe. Everybody. They were talking about it on Hockey Night in Canada. People were uh, posting about it on social media. There was a buzz in the building. There was Ranger fans. There was Leaf fans. And what does Sheldon Keefe do? First shift, Rempe gets out there. He throws out fucking Nylander's line. And I'm going, what in the fuck is this guy doing? Yeah, yeah. And again, Rempe's line comes out, throws out Nylander's line. And for you pigeons up there, they're like, oh, you're trying to win the hockey game. We want to put their line against their fourth line. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> like, shut up. Shut up. Like, what, what idiots are up there thinking idiots. that? Yeah, they're yeah, idiots. they're idiots. Yeah. They're my f- Never they're played idiots. the game. They're idiots. Well, we're trying to win the hockey game. We're trying to get the matchup with the Leonard's line against their fourth line. Shut up. Everybody it's, wanted it's it. It's game 60, all right? Let's, Let's go. go. Yeah. Let's go. It's Saturday night. It's a heavyweight tilt. I, I don't want to speak for Ryan Reeves, but I'm going to speak for Reppy as a young kid because I was there. You want it to happen right away. Yeah. Maybe that's why Keefe was doing it, to fuck with him. I don't know. Or maybe Revo said, hey, I'm going to do it later. But I thought that Sean Keefe should have put Revo out there right away. Yeah. Get it over with. Let's get it going. Just get the people on their feet. Yeah, it would have been unbelievable. So Sean Keefe, you're on the milk cart for made me wait to the third period. I had to wait to the third period, and I was cooking something. I almost missed it. I had to go back and rewind it. Fuck off. Get him out there. It, it did happen in quite... Awesome fashion. Well, after he put Labushkin in the third row, he had to. I agree. What a but hit. It was like, you know, six minutes left in a 3 2 game. I mean, stepping out, center ice, shedding the mitts. It, they did it both like absolute gladiators. It was awesome. It was great. Revo said this kid is going to be a menace. Someone's knocking on the door. But Revo said it's gonna be, he's going to be a menace in the league, which I agree. Yeah. Kid, he already is. Kid, kid, he doesn't even really know how to fight yet. Like he's still like when he no, hurts, I know. When he yeah. Hurts, like he should take boxing this off season and just be a killer, and just be an absolute murderer, and no one will touch him. He was the boogeyman around. like that when he came in? Boogeyman, a little bit, right? Boogeyman Probably. didn't know how tough he was till he yeah. got to the NHL, and then he realized how tough he was. And look out, game set. Match. It was over. Yeah, up dog the boogeyman. Once he got to mini, then he kind of realized, and it was. <laughs> yeah, Rappy, keep it going, kid. Go to Do West. You don't have to. You don't have to pay for your drinks. I already talked to Lupo Mac LK. Get down there, treat yourself. I'd say he's getting free meals at Carbone. Shoot. Should be getting free everything, right? Free everything. West Garden. And listen for these people who are like his face. You see his face. Chicks love that. Sawed off shotgun. Yeah. West <laughs> Chicks love a black guy and a scar. And, and... Don't they? Yeah. You know. I mean, it. listen, buddy. Love you just it. keep going. You will be thumping the yeah. top top Six echelon. Eight. Yes. He's from Alberta. I thought he was from British Columbia. He's from uh... Fort Sask. Is he really? I think he's from Fort Sask. Let's look wow. that up. I think Lupul told me that. Something Grove, I thought. Spruce Grove? Something like that. Yeah, that's maybe. Northern Alberta, too. Matt Rampey. 
Calgary. Yeah. It says 21 from Calgary. So we were 20, way off. 21 from Calgary. <laughs> well, he's a good Alberta boy. Keep it going, buddy. Keith, next time there's a heavyweight matchup, get out of the way and just let the boys go. Some of us got other games to watch and we got some barbecuing. And, come on, fella. Uh, listen, the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, they are officially on the milk carton here. I, I picked them to make the playoffs. Fucking loophole. We went up to play Riviera and loophole. Uh, anyways, they're not going to make the playoffs. They're in one beyond belief. They're old. They're slow. I mean, that Nola Chari, I like the kid, but yeah, yeah. he's in one. Pooley Arvey, not the answer. In well, he hasn't even played. Not, nor should he. Uh, my question, Two-year deal. My question to you is, what do you do with Sidney Crosby? He's got one year left after this at 8.7. What do you mean? What do you do by Friday? Well, no, he's not. Can you move there. him now? Why uh, not? Why not? I don't think that's good because he probably doesn't want to move right now. Does he? I'd want to go play for the playoffs. Yeah. Right? No, I've, what if now, what if this is the year? Like, he still what? thinks there's no there's no question in my mind that he still thinks in his in his soul of souls that he can get the Penguins in. If you asked him right now and said, "Sid, do you think you guys are done?" He'd say, "No chance. We can get it here." Well, he's wrong. Yeah, he's just a legend. No, but he's a realist man. though. Where would, where would he want to go though? Listen, I've said this all. He's along. got well, one more I've year heard left. Some other guy, I think I heard Biz say it too. Like Colorado's where he's got to go. But at eight point seven for another year. I, I don't know how you fit him in. Cap's going to go up ten million bucks. Maybe that's how you do it. Colorado's where you should go. One more Rangers. Nate McKinnon, go there, win a couple more with your buddy from Nova Scotia, right? That's what I think. What if you trade him for Lafreniere, two first rounders? He get him for New York for a year, two years. Uh, maybe, maybe. I don't. Know. I don't think he's getting traded right now. But the time has come, and congratulations, Kyle Dubas, because you're going to have to be the guy to trade Sidney Crosby. And I wonder if he even thought about that. And he keeps giving Mike Sullivan these blessings of he's the guy. Maybe Sully's not the guy. I love Sully. I love Mike Sullivan. He helped me so much in my development. I watch more video with Sully than I watch Where porn. Did you have him? I watch porn nowadays. Yeah. I've been Tampa. I love Sully. Oh. But fuck, he's been there forever. They can't win. And Kyle Dubas keeps saying, he's our guy. He's our guy. Could Why be per- is he the person- guy? A personnel's not perfect. I mean, it's just like... Carter, I, I, this is Carter's last year. You just said Achari. Carter, they're, Carter, you know, they're going to move Gensel. Malkin's, you know, he's still having a pretty good year. Latang's not perfect. Ek sixty five is that was a ter- horrendous. Ter- yeah, was, yeah. Nope. Listen, they got they got a, they got a lot of fucking rich guys in that locker room. Yeah, I'm sure their I'm sure their meals on the road are pretty nice, right? Yeah. There's no shortage of well, as there. it should be National League, yeah. but you still got to you know put that on the ice or. Sidney Crosby's not going to want to just Ryan Getzloff it and just sail away with no. losing seasons. He's 36 years old. Eh? He's going to be 37. He's yeah. playing great. I know. He's a great player. I mean, if you put Sidney Crosby behind Nathan McKinnon, I mean, look out. They could win two They could win two more before Sid's done. Yeah, so if he took like a $5 million a year deal. So let's see. Yeah. He says make, he makes 8.7 next year. Then the year after that, he makes 4 or $5 million bucks. I mean, he's rich. He doesn't need money. He's the highest paid. He's the highest paying hockey player ever. He's made more money than anyone. And I don't think he's like me and you. I don't think he fucking spends money like a drunken sailor. I think he's pretty smart, no? Yeah. Like, yeah he's probably done some good investments. Yeah, I think he's all right. He's, he's all invested right. in himself. He's not going to need a podcast. He stayed in the squat rack. And, <laughs> he's not going to yeah. need a podcast. He stayed out of the bar and, and did lunges. He's he's good. Cross me to the abs. You heard it here first. Let's make it happen up there, boys. Back up the brakes truck. Beep, 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 beep. Pedersen, wow. eight years, 92.8 bananas, 11.6 a year, coming off a three-year, 7.3 banana contract. Listen, he had all the leverage. They had to sign him. I think it's good to sign him now. Listen, they were 1-5-1 and one in their last seven heading into – they beat the Ducks the other night 2-1. I, I haven't loved their game lately. I'm, much, I'm looking forward to watching them play tonight against the Kings. I think this is great. I think he's a good guy. It's a good contract. Uppy, could you imagine playing in Vancouver and making eleven and a half million dollars? Oh my God, could you imagine? Could you imagine? No, I couldn't. I opened my own bar. That Jason Garrison lived right beside Luongo. It had a great pad back on this one little, this one little inlet. It was so sick. Just past fucking, um, what do you call it? The Yale Town. Yale Town. I mean, it was so mint back there. Um, but listen, good player. Deserves every cent. Yeah, the Swedes love it there. Too, when I right? look at this list here, you got JT Miller, eight million. Quinton Hughes, seven Quinton Hughes. point seven point five, seven point eight five million bucks. He's got to be Steel. the biggest bargain this year. Steal. Brock Besser, six 
and a half. Tyler Myers six. Thatcher Dempo another steal. Five million bucks. I mean, they are. I, can they do something this year? Because now is their year. They're all yeah. making. You know, before these new deals will start kicking in, can they get? Can they get something done? They should pick up another Ford. Yeah. Yeah. Gensel. Gensel. Be Gensel great. would be a good pickup. I think Gensel's going to go to Vegas for some reason, but Vegas, man, Vegas. Yeah. Stone's going to come back. Stone's done we, for the year, I guess. Yeah, they say that. They said that last year, too. I know. He played unbelievable. Didn't he? Back up the Brinks truck. The rich get richer. Jonathan Quick, one year, $1.27 million. The only reason I put this in is the LA Kings should never trade him. You're giving Dustin Brown a statue. You trade Jonathan Quick like he's a piece of garbage, and now he's kicking. They, 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 they could use Quickie. Good on him. Keep it going, buddy. Enjoy the league as long as you can. The updog misses every day. And Tommy Novak, three years, three and a half million uh, for the National Predators. I like this kid's game. He's a pure shooter, updog. He's a pure shooter. Uh, it's good to see him get rewarded yeah. and stay in Smashville. Good Absolutely. tax there. That's Tennessee. a nice deal. That's a real nice that'll deal. F- that'll pay the bills and maybe get you a new pad. Oh, yeah. And Smash still gets you a nice pack. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, right in the gold. Shay, get a nice little penthouse Three and in the a half, gold. Four million bucks. No state tax. Five bedrooms, hot tub, sauna. Fuck, enjoy. Big old workbench. Golf cart, buzz around Broadway, yeah, drunk you're, on. You're set there. You're set. A couple scooters, two girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> Rumor mill. We got the trade deadline coming up on Fella Friday. Up dog, the boys, we have their cell phones close to them at morning skates. Listen. Noah, ha- listen. The Florida Panthers have five point seven million in de- in cap space for the deadline. That is a ton of cap space. Tons. Bill Zito, we bumped into him last year in the finals. Seems like a great guy. He's got to make. Uh, they're playing so well, but use that cap space. Yeah. Don't don't leave any money on the table here. Go get somebody. Uh, Noah Hannafin, uh, he wants to go to Tampa, but I think Florida would be a good fit for him. But he wants to go play for Coop in Tampa. I can't blame him. He does. Uh, eh? Yeah, that's what he said. That's his, or that's the rumor that that's his Wait number Wait till he one sees spot. the new practice rink in Florida. And yeah, it's, you know, you got 11, not too far away. Yeah. John Cooper had a fishing thing yesterday. Gretzky showed up. All the boys out there I fishing. It, yeah. For uh, patriotic cancer, which is great. Good for him. That's a, that's a tough one. Totally. Uh, listen, trade deadline, I'm interested to see. Not a whole lot of big, big names out there, right, Ups? But uh, I think there's some good depth guys. You know, Adam Henrik's a guy's name's out there. Yeah. Uh, Noah Hannafin we just talked about. Uh, we'll go through it some more on Fellow Friday, but uh, this is where you can make the move to, to make the other kid over. here in Anaheim has been having a hell of a year. Vertranen. Vertranen, yeah. Like, Vertrano. Fuck, he's been scoring. He's yeah. fast. I would trade him. I know, but <laughs> they stink. They they do stink. You know, get some young picks. They Who else stink. is tradable in the Ducks here now that they're in our backyard? Fowler. Fowler? What are do with Cam Fowler? He's going to be too old before he knows it. Cam. Let's see what Cam's making nowadays. He's probably making seven and a half. Is that what he's making? Six and a half. Why is he not a member of Big Canyon? Six and a half. Six and for a half. another two years after this. So that's a, he's, he's only thirty two years old. I bet you thought he was old that, didn't you? Yeah. Well, what was he got? Fuck, he's been in the league since yet? eighteen. How many games he got? He's got a lot of matches. Listen. I mean, you, Adam Henrique, yes, they can trade. They're going to trade him, you would think. UFA. Jacob Silverberg's a UFA. Somebody maybe grab him for a depth guy. Stromer's not going anywhere. But Trano, he's only got one more year left at 3.6, so maybe ups. Listen, I think if you need a guy for some grit in the playoffs, Max Jones. Max Jones, to me, is a guy that can play on anyone's third or fourth line, and he can bring that competitive edge to you. He would be a guy that yeah. would be. Sam Carrick's another guy that's yeah. that's got some meat potatoes to him that you could pick up. Uh, and then, you know, Gudis has got two more years at four. Eh. I don't know. I think no, Gibby, I think Gibby's not going anywhere. Gibby ain't going anywhere. He ain't going anywhere. A lot of talk Gibby going somewhere for a lot of years. No, he's not. He, has, has he not. loves it here. He's not. Uh, last but not least, around the National League up dog, uh, the Leafs, they picked up Lubushkin, who two weeks ago on this very podcast, you said, hey, what about that right-handed D-man for the Ducks? Well, Brad Tree Living was listening to you because they picked him up. I still think they're going to make another move for another D-man. They got to. This guy can't play with Morgan Riley as much as I like him. And then the big boy, Curtis McDermott, gets traded to the New Jersey Devils, and this is the Matt Rempe effect. Good on Tom Fitzgerald. you got a young nucleus of players. You see this big mutant in New York fighting everyone. you got to go out and get somebody. Yeah. I can't wait for Devils Rangers. This is going to be a ding, 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 heavyweight tilt. I love the pickup. It's good for Greener. You got to get a heavyweight when there's a heavyweight in your division. I agree. It's hockey. Yeah, totally. There's a couple of heavyweights in there. It's time. Uh, Zabana Jet did the Lupul shootout move the other night in Toronto. 
Same move. Did he? He pushed it out and ripped it post in. Jeez. Oh. Yeah, he did. He probably didn't have as much fun as Lupul did after those games, though, right? Probably not. Not many did. Not many did. Uh, last but not least, Wigsy Bailey had the A on his jersey the other night. Fuck, he looks good out there. Who's the C? Backlund. Yeah, he should. Uh, Wigsy Bailey. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they re-signed Backlund this summer, right? But uh, yeah. Anyway, Weeks, listen, his baby. hair looks hell of a year. His hair Keep looks good. Going. His hair looks good in warm up. Yeah. Listen, the Flames are fun to watch, man. They play hard. They play hard. They play hard. They're not going to make it, but they play hard. Last but not least, up dog. Dave Panyota has made an announcement that the Montreal Canadiens will be playing in Paris in 2025. All I got to say to you is, fella tour. Wow, Paris. Let's go. Do we bring our girls or? Right, we'll talk about that off the air. Okay. Soul House. We stay at the Soul House, Paris. We'll smoke is cigarettes. next year? Yeah. 2025. Yeah, so like next year. We're in 24 now, right? So it'll be like, yeah, it'll be like. I don't know when it's going to be. Probably oh, yeah, preseason, probably, right? Uh, maybe not preseason. Global series, so start of the season. That's I how they do you, that. Yeah, so it'll be you know not next year, the start of this season after. October of 25. Yeah. Love that. Let's go. I've been to Paris with you. Remember Top Titty? Well, I'd love to. No, Titty Twister it was called. Great, great spot. What a bar. Loops lost us his credit card, his jacket, and uh, we had to carry his ass for... The next 10 days. Yeah, so I was I was looking through my little Europe trip that I put together when we're out of the studio in July, and I'm like trying to look for a hotel room. Soul House is booked. There's not a fucking hotel room in Paris. I'm like, what? Like, what's going on? So I text Bex DeMarco. Be- I say, Bex, where do you stay in Paris? And she goes, I, like, I can't find a hotel. She's like, what are the dates? I'm like, go to dates. She's like, that's right when the Olympics yeah. are going. I'm like, wow, I, I'm not going there then. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? When did we go there? We went there in like May, right? We went there right at the end of the season. Oh, yeah. Drunker than a skunk. I'm going yeah, back was, to London. It'll be nice. a little chilly there, I remember. I don't remember London. All I remember is fish and chips and being fucking drunk as a skunk. Remember that place we had the W? Oh, yeah. Shout out to Yeah, you, Joel. You and Loops are like, yeah, yeah, come on. I got a three bedroom. I get to sleep on the couch. I'm like, these two fucking, yeah. We just had to get you over there, buddy. <laughs> I was coming either way. <laughs> yeah, I was coming either way. Up dog, always fun being in the studio. Morgan, My man. Kyle, Hall Pass Media. That was missing curfew. Fellas.